As I look around here, some of you people are getting younger, especially the females. Uh, speaking of females, I'd like for you to know this right from the start. Carolyn says, don't make the damn thing dry. These people had a big dinner, and I want you to put some jokes in the steel. <laughs> Paula says, if you tell any more of those damn jokes, I'm going back and leave. <laughs> She's in there already. So automatically, I'm in the box. So tonight, I'm going to stay spend the night in Caroline's house. I think I have a good joke that I think you appreciate about the uh, Yankee that was over in, <coughs> excuse me, in London, and he gets on the bus and he can't find a seat, so he goes way in the back, and there is this uh, <coughs> dowager sitting there with a little pool sitting on the seat next. He's a bigger part, man. <coughs> that your dog? Yes, that's Fifi. He said, "Would you mind moving? And I'd like to sit there." Oh no. Fifi rides there. He said, Madam, I have walked all over London and I'm tired. I'd like to sit down. No. With that, he picks up Fifi, grabs him by the neck, and throws his butt back out the window. He was a staid British banker with a bowler hat and the umbrella, watching all this. And he says, I say, Yank, you Yanks are all the same. He said, you drive on the wrong side of the road. He says, you put ice in your whiskey, and you just threw the wrong pitch out the window. Paul and I came down in the 40s, and we always, pardon the expression, went to Fort Myer Beach. And uh, we liked very much there, never come to Annemarie And when we decided to get out of the hectic rep race of the advertising business, we looked at the property values of Fort Myer Beach and Sanibel. And the property values there, of course, were very high to our way of thinking. And we're only interested in Florida relative to the sand spits, such as we have here, long road, et cetera, and so on. Uh, we came up to Anna Maria, and uh, for example, take an inland block, forget the Gulf front or the Bay front, one block or two blocks inland. Uh, Fort Myers Beach should have a, a lot of a couple thousand dollars. An Anna Maria would be a couple hundred dollars. But of course, we're talking now 40, 49 uh, dollars, 1949. But the reason for that was obvious because the only way to get on this island, as a lot of you know, was on Cortez Road with potholes this deep. Okay. And if it rained, you would be, have a rough time getting to the bridge, and the bridge had a big bore as it jumped up and down, and it was so bad that uh, that's the only way you could get on the island. And it was so bad that when the school bus came, no other traffic was allowed on the bridge. <coughs> and the, the big turnaround at the bridge, because tourists and so on would take one look at that bridge and say, uh -uh, and they turn right around. <laughs> However, sometimes they'd be in a crowd and they were on the bridge before they knew it. But on the right in the beach side, it was another turnaround to get you get them back off of there quick. So that was a holdup. But we all knew that in time you're going to get the bridges, and now we have all the publicity on bridges. And a lot of us worked real hard to get bridges. <clears throat> uh, a bridge 
four in the south. We went to <coughs> one bridge, and that was to replace the Cortez Bridge. And lots of times we hear about politicians feathering their nests and so on. And a lot of us got involved in this, and we went to Tallahassee, and there's a man named McKeithen in um, Clearwater, who was the head of the road bridge committee. And uh, we worked on him to allocate some money for just the one bridge to replace the Cortez Bridge. Well, the power to be in Tallahassee said you're going to make a package of three. In 1936, the Longbow Key Bridge went up with the hurricane. That's number one priority. Number two is the Cortez Bridge. But number three, look at the map. The growth is in the middle of this island and it's going to come to Manatee Avenue. It's going to come right through here. So it's going to be three bridges, which is going to mean 25 cent toll going. 25 cent toll coming, and there is going to be no passes for you people in Anna Maria. And there were very few that said that 25 cents going or coming, plus the fact you have a three cent uh, of your gas would be for the bond holders. I mean, they would hold that to enable them to buy the, sell the bonds for the bridge. Well, we in the political arena, which is my first experience, figured, boy, this is a sandbag job, you know, and boom, boom, boom. But look at the way it turned out. They're absolutely right. And we were stupid. But that's the way it should have been, and that's the way it turned out. However, there were other things here in Florida and on the island in the political situation, <clears throat> which are something like that you see in, on TV, like Texas, where a guy gathers up all the oil rights, cattle rights, one way or another. As a, for instance, when I was in office in Anna Maria, building inspector comes to me one day and says, hey, trip this guy wants to build it. Uh, a home over there on uh, Porter Bayfront Park is today, and he wants a building permit. Well, we own the land. That's what I thought, but he's got uh, the um, tax receipts on all that land. So he comes to the observer with him, and he showed me since 1946. On all the land, he's going to come and get tax receipts. Well, the way the we or other municipalities got the land <coughs> went way back. You know, they were the boom, for the boom, nobody could pay the taxes, so the municipalities cut the land. <coughs> so we had to hire a lawyer, and the lawyer said, hey, if you want to uh, get pay the taxes on John Dean and I'll go ahead, he'd be happy as hell to have to do it. You're not going to get it, but you, and the tax assessor, he could care less, go and get paid for it. So it doesn't mean anything. But this is the type of thing that was going on, plus the fact we had in Anna Maria and Holmes Beach, uh, land on the tax rolls that were sold at a very nominal figure in France. So we made it a law that had to be advertised three times in local papers and uh, therefore we were able to get money to pay off our bonds and debts. People, we have real fine people, still do of course. We have had people to give an idea of immense wealth here. Uh, Paul and I go out of an evening with the kids down the corner to 
place called the Anchorage, which is now uh, uh, Bass Eddies. <coughs> we went there down and <coughs> beat Sis McGee and a couple other weirds down there. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this guy would uh, go out and he would uh, get smoke bullet every uh, he get he is a smoker and he get mullet every day. And he'd get a beer and uh, sit on the porch and smoke bullet. And there was a, a nice woman who was we thought was elderly at the time. Uh, and a nice guy and he had, a, had the same old khaki pants on all the time and he had a hole in the side of the of his bridges and so on. And he hit that home that's on the gulf that sits way out and it's made of driftwood. Uh, has a name for it. You, you know the one that sits right out of the gulf? Ludwig. Ludwig. Yeah, Ludwig's Ludwig. the name of the people. So anyway, uh, real nice people. We know them for, you know, I guess, a year or so. <laughs> said, uh, well, when I first met her, what business you And he said, well, I'm retired. I used to be in shipping. <laughs> One day we had an invite. We'd like to, uh, our boat is coming over, and we'd like to have you over for cocktails. We looked out there from the city pier. That yacht, was, this is before Anastas, was the largest private yacht in the world. <laughs> and it was Ludwig, and he's one of the richest men in the world, his son, but he had built the bill. He had Chris Craft motor boats as uh, white boats, with a sailor in the front and a sailor in the back. <laughs> and to show you the cosmopolitan group that we had, the garbage man, Virgil Mar and his wife. <laughs> and we all went out there, and they have a big band shell on the back of this room. <laughs> and it uh, hasn't changed much in that area. I mean, those, those people that come down from the north with the books, brothers, suits, and all that jet, they change real fast. Or else they should move somewhere. And that's what people are. And that's what we all like. Um, storms. We have never been hit in 42 years. We've had the storms that uh, blow. Um, yeah, just through on the side. But anyway, when I. Uh, was mayor and I only been in the office for a couple of weeks. About two o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call from uh, Mr. Lacious, my neighbor. And uh, I answered the phone. He said, Trip. Yeah. He said, uh, My seawall is coming down. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what do you mean? It's uh, blowing. He said, Well, you're, you're the mayor. You've got to handle it. <laughs> I said, well, um, okay, I'll, I'll see you. Right, okay, right. So I hang up, then I take the phone off the door. Then <laughs> I look in the paper and I find out that the tide is now receding and what they got to do about it anyway. But I found out, George, right then and there, the smart idea which I have given to Ray and all the other mayors way back under. I went, down to the city clerk the next day and I said, hey, Charlie Jones, he's in charge of police. Each commission, he's in charge of this. And this guy, he's in charge of it. And I mailed it to every citizen. <laughs> so then they called, I said, hey, see what it said there, George McKay. Storm. <laughs> you got a number right there, right? What the hell do you call me? I handle banking. Nine to five. And it worked out pretty good. But uh, also we had sandbagging. Instantly, you have, I'm sure, you have a stock of sandbags, do you not? Yes, sir. And uh, we did a lot of sandbagging. Uh, I think. Uh, one good story on the sandbagging is 
I got a call somewhere around midnight that the sandbar was leaving us. Now, the sandbar in those days was only a bar with a very nice porch, however. And you'd go out there and you could see the sunset and so on. And it was only a bar and there was no food running. And uh, so I got over there and just in time to see the the, the porch itself heading for Mexico. <laughs> but the, also the whole damn thing was rising and falling and the guys were shoveling and putting the sandbag there. And there was a guy named Pat Holmes owned the place. No relation at all to uh, Holmes and Holmes Beach. And Pat Holmes walked up and down, up and down, $10,000. $10,000. Anybody give me $10,000 right now, they can have the stock, the land, the building, and he had an apartment in the back, and the apartment, the whole thing, right now, $10,000. There's about 14 of us there. If they clicked the whole thing, we couldn't go. <laughs> I mean, this is a... As a matter of fact, things were such that uh, in those days, Anna Maria was so poor, we couldn't afford a town drunk. We had two guys. They had, uh, the two guys had, uh, one guy had Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the other guy had Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And by the, their wives made them take Sunday off, so they stood up that one. But uh, the other item that we had, I think, of interest is animals, uh, primarily snakes, raccoons. Uh, of interest, I think, is we had a, down a block from us, a, another young couple, I believe they were young then, we had little children, and uh, this woman and her husband had little children. And she would run up to Paul and say, hey, get the children out of here. I'm in and out, rather, because of, uh, there's a rattlesnake in the area. And she could smell. And uh, so Paul would get the children in the house. And within a day or two, in our area, they would kill a rattlesnake. And I find later on that that is the case, that some people can uh, smell a rattler. And another thing about rattlers, the, across from the city pier, they had the gladiola farms. And prior to the time when they, uh, when they were uh, allowed to burn off their farms, which are put on the land, which of course they cannot do anymore. They uh, they would wait till the wind was right towards the west, and they burn off the ground prior to <coughs> planting the new crop. And of course, all of the snakes would head for the water. Uh, the snakes, as I understand it, weren't too confused about that. They didn't like to get in the salt water. But uh, the way we hear about it is because the guys on the city pier primarily, they hear bang, bang, and the guys around there shooting at the snakes as they come by. But uh, after that time, we would have quite a few snakes on the island until we got most of them. Never did get all of them. Um, the other thing I think it might be of interest, it ended up with a joke just for uh, Carolyn's sake. Uh, <laughs> and the old golf drive was the main up and down. That, is, of course, was uh, a shell drive. This is prior to my time. But uh, there was a woman, and I. this is told to me in Gospel Truths, and I'm sure it's true because I heard it so many times. Down this lower part of Holmes Beach, it would get up early in the morning uh, with nothing on and go swimming in the Gulf of Mexico. And she would 
lots of times wind up about a block or two from home and then get out of the road and head for home. <laughs> and you can imagine the guy coming down the road. I have a chance, yeah, nice day. <laughs> but uh, I do know from the Chamber of Commerce that when people wrote to the Department of Health in Washington, and you know this, you doctors know this, I'm sure, for a rheumatic or uh, uh, another problem that they recommend this area as one of the best in the country for that kind of a problem, don't okay. Live here? So when I, I remember when I was here, when you could see the Gulf and you went down the road, that uh, people would be there in wheelchairs and everything else. But the joke to end it all, for Carolyn's sake, is the gals, two gals sitting there in this old retirement home, and one was this wifey little gal, and she said, Mabel, look at those two old guys. Everybody's sitting around, and there's no get up and go to this place. Uh, I'm going to get something going. What do you think? I'm going to streak it. Ah, yes, I am. And she took her coat off. She ran down the path. And so uh, the guy said, uh, I said, John, did you see that? What the hell was that? He said, damn fine, no, but it sure needed iron. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>